Huh? What a dream. Ah! This isn't a dream! Hey guys, it's Suralum1. Wow, what a surprise. Welcome to my D23 2017 Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer analysis. So yeah, clearly I've been gone. On August 1st, I made a video letting you guys know about this rough patch I've been dealing with and how I didn't really feel the passion to make content such as a trailer analysis for the time being, and that I may not end up doing one at all. Well, um... In terms of YouTube content at least, it's been a really hard motivation lacking four or so months since then. You may have noticed, I have started tossing bits and pieces of content back up on the channel again starting from two weeks ago, as I'm starting to rekindle that spark. But as of now, it's November, and my gears are really turning again. I'm excited to do this again. So here, I bring you an extremely long overdue trailer analysis. Now this trailer surprised me, me here looking at it in November. You see, since that time from before where I decided I can't really find the heart to make content, I also didn't really have the heart or desire to really delve in and take a closer look at this Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer for myself. This trailer was always kinda there and I'd pay very little attention to it outside of my first reaction. I can't tell you the exact reason why I felt no desire to even look at it, but I guess you can say in this time period up until now, I felt very burned out from Kingdom Hearts hype, Kingdom Hearts discussion, and I just kind of let myself take the time to relax and think about some other games. But today, finally dusting off the old trailer and taking a look at it, I really started getting excited again, like, wow guys, have you seen this game? I guess I should be saying that to myself, as I'm the one who's been staying away from it all this time, not you guys. Anyways, sorry for the long introduction, but I felt you guys needed some explanation and reintroduction into my old style of content again. It feels good to be back in this position, and I can say that honestly now. Better late than never, and besides, it just wouldn't feel right having me analyze all the trailers but one, right? So, without any further ado, let's crack this trailer open and take a closer look. The trailer opens once again with the quote, Don't assume your dreams are just fantasy. If you can imagine a world, believe in it, and dive in. Well, at least the short version of this trailer does. At this point, it looks like this phrase will be Kingdom Hearts 3's equivalent to the Thinking of You Wherever You Are text from Kyrie's letter that displays in the introduction of Kingdom Hearts 2. In the full version of the trailer, it opens up with a bunch of spliced gameplay clips showing off Olympus and Twilight Town, but has the Dreams text overlapping over the entire image. Thankfully, the gods over at Square Enix did release that second, short version of this trailer, and in that version we can see gameplay with nothing blocking it. I really appreciate the way that they released this intro separately so that we can actually get a good look. The trailer opens with Sora, Donald, Goofy, and Hercules in Olympus, and can I just say, wow, has the game always looked this good? Maybe me staying away for so long has just got me to forget how awesome this gameplay perspective is. Sora's model looks so good dude and the lighting- mm. Sora jumps onto this glowing track here and transitions into flow motion. But this is different, there's a target reticle and now Sora has the options to use blaster, probably with X, super slide, probably with square, and jump off with circle. On his way down the track, Heartless appear. It's the same Thunder Heartless from the Jump Festa 2015 trailer, and Sora shoots them with his blaster. You'll notice after Sora has committed to shooting one of the Heartless, the target symbol that appears when he highlights them will stay on the Heartless until the shot reaches and kills them. The mysterious super slide mechanic is not shown in this trailer, but I imagine it would be similar to when you dash on rails with flow motion and dream drop distance or perhaps a version of that you're able to hold down and keep dashing rather than repeatedly tapping the square button. Next, we get a scene of Sora using his shot lock in order to use Flow Chain, which was also first seen in the Jump Festa 2015 trailer. We can see here that the shot lock is able to target not only enemies but objects and terrain to of course maneuver your way across something with your Flow Chain. 
This time, however, we can see that the flow chain charge does deplete Sora's focus gauge, but strangely, when he releases the flow chain, none of his focus meter has been drained at all. Maybe if you don't use your shot lock on any actual enemies, it won't deplete focus, or this was just done for trailer purposes in this build. Worth noting though is that when Sora used it in 2015 against enemies instead of objects, his focus did deplete. Looking back to when the camera focuses on Sora during the flow chain, if we look down below for a split second, we can see an area that looks just like the area where Sora was fighting in the last trailer. This implies that this whole sequence has been taking place in the same big giant room, with this area just being a gigantic place. And that is not much of a surprise, but cool to see in action. We can also see in the very top left corner that same type of glowing rail that Sora was sliding on in the beginning of the trailer. This one also has clouds around it, and the one we were looking at before seems to head into a similar looking cloud tunnel, so maybe it's the same exact rail from before, and this is where it ends. At the end of the flow chain, Sora lands on this platform with a save point, a gate, and this mysterious symbol on it. One could say that it is similar to Axel's chakram weapons he used, but I doubt there would be that type of symbolism in a Disney world. Color me shocked if it's actually supposed to be representing Axel's weapons. I'm guessing this is some kind of compass or sun symbol that's supposed to signal what type of area this is. I'm no expert on the Hercules movie, so I'm not sure if this symbol is something prominent to the Disney world, if anyone in the comments has an idea, please let me know. This platform also has the symbol hanging from a chain, as if this can be used to pull something up. When Sora gets closer to it, it has this outline and glow around it. This outline is very similar to the outlines that come around interactable objects in previous Kingdom Hearts games, though they're usually green with triangle being the command to activate them. In the Japanese trailer, we can get a better look, and you can see it's a square symbol. Why would it be square instead of triangle? Well, I think I got it all figured out. This square symbol is extremely similar to the square symbols that appear on all the interactable objects when Sora aims his shot lock at them for flow chain earlier. I'm guessing this is just an indicator to let the player know that this is a flow chain interactable object. So, walking around the worlds of Kingdom Hearts 3, you'll probably pass areas that glow with this exact little square as just a little way of telling the player like, hey, try using Flow Chain on me and see what happens. In our next scene, Sora has the Star Seeker-like Keyblade in Twilight Town fighting a group of Neo Shadows and Dusks. In Sora's combos, he always does one normal attack and then three consecutive finishers. So his combo setup is equal to having one negative combo on and two finishing pluses. This combo setup applies to the whole rest of the trailer. In the Japanese version of this trailer, Sora combos but uses dodge roll to cancel his attacks instead, showing off how flexible it is to cancel your combo. This has been present since around Birth by Sleep, but it's always nice to see it demonstrated again. Sora's physical combos enable him to go into a form after building up enough hits on the command meter, and yep, it looks like forms work exactly as I thought they did back in June. We get to see this Keyblade's form, Double Arrow Guns, which is something we did get to see back in 2015, but this animation is so much cleaner. The lighting doesn't get all dark, Sora doesn't look like he's soaking wet, you can even see the sunshine on the tips of Sora's hair and Sora's hands properly align with the guns during the animation instead of whatever that was in 2015. And Sora even gives a nice smile to the camera. Big, big improvement since last time, looks very good, great job Square. And yes, this animation does do damage while activating it, just like the counter shield from before and I assume any form would. Immediately we can see that while in this form, Sora targets multiple enemies instead of just one. Except for when he's locked on, it'll only show one target. The basic attacks are shooting attacks very similar to Wisdom Form in Kingdom Hearts 2, with a nice finisher that shoots out multiple tracking shots in one blow, kind of like a double Ragnarok. Unfortunately, the camera control for Sora sliding and shooting looks terrible. Sora's practically off screen for a lot of it. I hope they work on that. After Sora has filled up the three arrows above his command menu, he gets the option to go into Magic Launcher. 
Magic Launcher is another part of this form that has him turn the guns into a giant cannon. This is no surprise, as I said in the past, forms appear to be command styles, and command styles in Birth by Sleep had this same kind of element, where you go into a level 1 command style, and if you do enough attacks, you can go into a level 2 command style, such as going into Spellweaver as Aqua, but then instead of doing the finish, you go into Blade Charge after that. Nomura in an interview has said that there are at least two different transformations per Keyblade, assuming there's no mistranslation or misinterpretation here. I wonder, would that mean the Kingdom Key has a second form too? Or maybe not, since the Kingdom Key doesn't technically appear to transform at all? That'll be interesting to see down the line. So, while Sora is in Magic Launcher, his attacks are much slower, but I assume do more damage. We have seen a glimpse of Magic Launcher before in the TGS 2015 2.8 trailer, and in that trailer we got to see what I assume is the finisher to these combos. Oh wait, that reminds me. It seems when Sora goes into these forms, he drops that combo setup of a negative combo and two finishing pluses for a more basic combo setup. It's not unheard of for command styles to change your combo setup, as I believe going Spellweaver with Aqua did give you an extra combo plus, but I wonder if these combos are customizable with abilities, or is the basic combo forced on you once you transform. Next, we see Sora activate the finish command for Magic Launcher, which means there is probably no level 3 to this form, or it's not unlocked. The finish launches a giant cannon shot that attacks everyone, kind of like Mega Flare from previous games. After launching it in the Japanese version of the trailer, Sora runs forward but is running with his non-combat stance, even though the command menu has never turned blue. It's either a glitch, or we may be getting dynamic run cycles for Sora instead of just one, but for now I'm wagering that this is just a glitch. As Sora exits the animation in the English trailer, a Neo Shadow manages to attack him but Sora doesn't stagger. We have seen this type of thing happen in the past with last year's 2.8 trailer, and maybe it's just a result of the game not being polished as much yet. Up next, we have Sora, Donald, Goofy, and Hercules fighting the Rock Troll that we first got to see in a screenshot released at Magic 2017 earlier this year. And wow, the environment is just gorgeous! Oh my god, the parts of Thebes are on fire, there's rubble around, and it really looks like the scene of a disaster. The rock troll goes in to attack Sora, and Sora guards the attack. But this guard takes effect quite a few frames before the sword actually touches Sora, which means this sword attack has a massive hitbox, and it makes you get hit before it looks like the sword actually touches you. Hopefully they touch this up later. As the attack clashes, it makes a lot of rocks sprout up from the ground, giving the illusion of environmental damage. This is very similar to what the Rock Titan did when it stomped in the last trailer, and an element we'll see a bit more of later on. Sora has the option to use Counter Slash after his guard, and him doing it staggers the boss. By the way, this Counter Slash move is beautiful! I love it! In the last trailer, we saw Counter Shield's ridiculously overdramatic counter, and it had me kind of worried, but this one is perfectly practical and even manages to stagger this big boss, which means it's probably equal to a finisher. It's a good one. Sora goes in to attack the boss, and he does a full combo, one hit, finisher, finisher, and going into another finisher before the trailer cuts to the next scene. During this combo, we get to see a brand new finisher. This one looks like the Kingdom Hearts 3 version of Zantetsuken, which was a finisher in Kingdom Hearts Final Mix and one for Limit Form in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. This is the first time I've ever seen it used in the air like this. Notice the boss only reacts with a stagger when Sora uses a finishing move. And that's fine. Giant bosses don't need to have an intricate stagger system like Revenge Value, but seeing this boss react to any attack at all, such as these finishers Sora's doing, is very nice and already an improvement over a <coughs> more recent <laughs> boss battle, which would react to nothing you do at all. This stagger and fall system is more simple than Revenge Value, and that's perfectly fine for a boss like this. Good, even. 
The weird thing is, this boss's health never depletes when Sora attacks him, at all. And he's the only enemy in this trailer that just has his health bar never go down for some reason. Next, Sora uses Firaga spells on him while moving. And the fourth fire spell ends up being a magic finisher! This is really surprising as in 0.2, they did away with magic finishers and just had Aqua use a basic spell no matter where it was in your combo. The boss staggers when getting hit by this fire magic finisher, which reinforces the idea that this boss will only stagger finishing moves. Once again, it's weird. Sora's magic spell combo setup isn't in line with Sora's negative combo and finishing pluses on his physical attacks. So it appears magic doesn't sync up with your Keyblade combo setup either, just like those forms didn't from earlier. They did sync up in Kingdom Hearts 2, so maybe it's just something that hasn't been implemented yet in this build, because with Sora's combo setup, he should have done one basic fire and three finisher versions instead of this basic chain here with only one finisher at the end. The beginning segment ends with Sora running to the rock troll and getting hit. In the Japanese trailer, Sora seems to genuinely get hit because the rock troll backdashes away from Sora's combo before he can stagger him, and as Sora's finisher pulls him closer, he ends up getting hit. The English trailer wanted to mimic the Japanese trailer as much as possible, so they had Sora just run up to him and take a hit. I also find it funny that if you watch the short version of this trailer, it has Sora run up and get hit at the very end, and then it just goes, whoosh, Kingdom Hearts 3. Wow, Sora gets hit in this game, let me go pre-order this right away. Like, him <laughs> getting hit is the grand finale, it's hilarious. Alright. All warmed up? Good, now let's get into the meat of this trailer. Nearly 20 minutes in, oh my lord. Hey, Toy Story! I was actually right when I called it in the orchestra trailer analysis. Here's Sora's Toy Story design, and wow, can I just say, this is the best Sora has ever looked in Kingdom Hearts 3 so far. This model is so sharp and crisp. Isn't it ironic that the best looking model we've seen has Sora literally made of plastic? After all the plastic lighting complaints of the past, I find it hilarious. <laughs> There's the Luxo Ball, a common Pixar movie easter egg. Isn't it just super nice to see a cutscene of Sora, Donald, and Goofy entering a world, talking about the world order, and going to fight Heartless? God, seeing this felt so good to me. It kind of makes you realize like, wow, this is about to be a traditional Kingdom Hearts game again, like Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, and that just feels so right after all these years. Oh, by the way, these Heartless are new, and Sora is wielding a new Toy Story themed Keyblade, which is obviously unlocked early for trailer purposes only. There is no way Sora would have a Toy Story themed Keyblade already equipped upon entering the Toy Story world for the first time, right? Isn't it great how seamless the battle transition is? Wow. The Heartless throws out some football shaped thing which I guess explodes or something when you touch it. This other one in the back has a blue ring when it jumps high in the air, which is an excellent cue, good design and then charges in with a dynamic entry. Really reminds me of those obnoxious air soldiers from Kingdom Hearts 1. After the cut, we can see that the Pixar ball has moved away from under the bed and is now in front of the door. Maybe this means there are several objects in Andy's room that aren't just for show, but can be moved around by you or the Heartless while you guys fight. Sora fires a Blizzaga and uses it to go straight into flow motion. Now, you know me, usually the sight of flow motion combat has me unsettled, but not this time. Sora does a shock dive, but unlike in Dream Drop Distance, where it has this 
massive shockwave effect, it seems to have been toned down a bit. Didn't even hit this frozen heartless that's right next to it. If flow motion attacks really are toned down like this in the final game and aren't way over the top, I do welcome them in Kingdom Hearts 3. Notice all these heartless have arrow guns. Briefly in this next clip, you can see that behind Sora, one of those Heartless shot at him, and the shot ends up flying under the bed just before Sora unleashes his finisher. God, these Toy Story character models are looking ridiculously good, like to unbelievable levels almost. When I was first watching this trailer, I was thinking this had to be fake because of how good these guys all look. Remarkable job on the graphics, like you can see smudges on Woody's hat, you have got to be kidding me dude. You can also see that Woody's right arm has stitches in it. Spoiler alert, Woody's arm falls off and has to get stitched back on in Toy Story 2, so that confirms that this takes place after Toy Story 2. Nomura in an interview confirmed that this world takes place between Toy Story 2 and Toy Story 3 and will have its own original story instead of following a movie plot. This makes it so that Big Hero 6 and Toy Story are both now Disney World's following completely original stories for Kingdom Hearts 3. そのハートレスが現れたのとみんなが I was surprised that they just outright are dubbed Organization 13 once again. I mean, I know they were revealed to be the true organization in Dream Drop Distance. I just didn't expect this again. I don't know. It feels nice though. Feels like Kingdom Hearts 2 all over again. <laughs> みんなが<笑><笑> Galaxy Toys is a new area in Toy Story that was not seen in the films. It's a toy store, and Nomura said that this place will be a focal point to the story arc for Toy Story and Kingdom Hearts 3. Looking at this poster, we can see an ad for the Gigas. These are giant, uh, I, I guess not so giant since we're all toys here, but ro giant robots that we'll get to see in action later. There's also these Julia dolls that have a price of $20.18. It might be a clever nod to the release year of 2018 being revealed in this trailer. Now we transition to gameplay outside and whoa we got 5 party members here. Ridiculous. This is the largest amount of characters we've ever seen fighting in one party in the entire series. Over here, we can see the pink heartless that we have previously seen in the Jump Festa 2015 trailer also making a return. How you doing? After Sora's air combo, we can see he unlocks the situation command for Hyper Hammer, which is the first level of transformation for this Keyblade. We can also see a trampoline here, and this is probably something that will boost you up if you ever want to get back up to the roof after jumping off. And BAM! There it is! This falling state Sora is in is confirmed to just happen when you fall from high up in the area. And Sora once again uses Diving Strike. 
Wow, the large body is actually looking up at Sora as he's coming down and does this. That's some very nice attention to detail. Uh, hey fellas, do you guys see that? I love how the diving strike is able to push back even large bodies. I know the enemies in the last trailer were big too, but it's a lot more clear when we see what this attack can do against large enemies that we already know. Also, is it just me, or do these large bodies look kinda plastic-like and a lot shinier than usual? Maybe they're toys just like us. After landing in the Japanese trailer, that same running animation thingy happens to Sora again, except this time we see him transition from the non-combat one to the combat running animation, even though he was in combat the entire time. Next up, Sora activates Hyper Hammer. The hammer spins around Sora on startup and attacks the enemies around it, but weirdly, not a single enemy staggers from getting hit with this gigantic hammer. This is Sora's power form. It was revealed last year in an Olympus screenshot, but the hyper hammer was blurred out from the image to avoid spoiling the Toy Story world. Nice to get some closure on that one. Right when Sora starts, he attacks from the air, which leads him to pound the hammer right into the ground. This might be how Hyper Hammer always works in the air, an attack that pulls you to the ground as this appears to be a very heavy weapon. You can see the faux environmental damage is present with the Hyper Hammer as well. All of its ground pounds will create these cracks in the ground temporarily. After the attack, Sora... Quick runs? This is the first time we have ever seen a quick run like this in Kingdom Hearts 3, and so far we've only ever seen it during Hyper Hammer. It's unknown if quick run is restricted to this form only, or perhaps leveling this form up in some way unlocks quick run for your regular Sora, like a growth ability. After the quick run, Sora uses a Firaga spell. Interestingly, the fire spell here is different, with the fire spell circling around Sora in an area of effect like manner. We now have confirmation that magic spells change along with the Keyblade transformations. He dodge rolls after that and performs a full physical combo with the hammer. Notice the hammer sloppily attacks everywhere as part of its normal combo instead of solely focusing on the target. They probably intend for this to be best for fighting large crowds and not on something like a singular boss. The finisher is huge and cinematic, changing camera angles and everything. This finisher doesn't have invincibility frames yet though. As we can see in the Japanese version of the trailer, Sora gets hit right as he does this finisher, so it looks to be very unsafe for now. After a couple more quick runs and fire demonstrations, we see Sora activate the second level of the Keyblade transformation, Drill Punch. Ah, so this is what they were teasing at the end of the last trailer. Sora's first attack looks like he immediately goes into a finisher with this, but it isn't actually a finisher. This is the start of a basic combo. Because in the Japanese version of the trailer, we get to see what happens after, and Sora goes underground and comes out with an actual big finisher. It appears Drill Punch in this trailer only has a two-hit combo, which once again is different from base Sora's combo setup. What's weird is, in the Japanese trailer, Sora is able to do several three-hit combos instead of two-hit combos while in Drill Punch. Maybe the form is higher level in the Japanese version, or you're able to customize the form's combos individually? The English version does show us a unique combo though, for when an enemy is far away from Sora while in this form. He drills and moves in close to them, and I guess this is Drill Punch's equivalent of Slide Dash, which leads to the same finisher right after. After this, Sora does what appears to be the startup of a dodge roll, except this dodge roll has him drill into the ground and lets him travel while underground. I think this underground drill thing replaces dodge roll entirely while Sora is in this form. It's pretty cool how they're even able to change movement abilities to suit the transformations. When Sora comes back out, he comes out attacking. Or at least it looks like he's attacking. While Sora's high up in the air, it looks like if there's a target directly under him, he will drill into the ground and do this giant finisher causing many drills to surface. 
Really interesting that they add combo options for enemies that are directly below you. I don't feel like I've ever seen special combos for enemies directly below you in Kingdom Hearts before. Next, Sora casts an Eroga spell while in this form. Notice it takes a lot longer to come out, and I can't notice any difference between this and the normal spell other than this one being a projectile. Anyways, Sora jumps into the arrow and is able to activate flow motion off of that. This is actually really cool, and we've seen this before with magic, like sliding on blizzard rails for example, but this one seems a lot more practical to me and will probably get more use out of me than the blizzard one. Also, notice that when Sora goes into his flow motion animation, oops, his keyblade reverts to normal, even though he's supposed to still be in the drill punch form. I would say this is probably so Sora can still use his flow motion attacks, as we can see he's starting a shock dive right before this clip cuts. It's interesting though, because in the Japanese trailer, Sora actually does keep his drill punch while in the flow motion state, and appears to be starting an attack with the drill. Maybe they just haven't implemented it fully yet, or the Japanese build is ahead of the English one in development, which makes sense admittedly. And our last combo we get to see with Sora's drill punch here is what looks to be the drill punch's basic air combo. Two hits as usual, and although the player is too far from enemies to do any damage at first, it sure looks pretty. When Sora activates the finisher for the drill punch, the punch forms a claw that grabs your targeted enemy. This may be a reference to the claw machine in the Toy Story movie. The claw takes the enemy and slams them around the arena, bashing into other enemies before one final big bash that seems to affect a bigger area. The entire time Sora is in the red power form, both his hyper hammer attacks and his drill punch attacks cover very large wide areas and I believe they both are suited to a crowd control combat style and would be less effective against fighting single targets. So if you were to want to use this form, use it on something like a 1000 heartless type of battle and not a data organization fight, for example. After looking at this power form clip, I did get an idea. Notice how Sora is in the same red power form during Hyper Hammer and during Drill Punch. There's no difference at all to him, only his Keyblade transformation. This got me thinking and I did think more deeply about how the concept of forms and Keyblade transformations will tie together. For example, the Olympus Keyblade goes into Counter Shield and activates Sora's Guard form. What if the same form applies to multiple Keyblade transformations? Let me explain. So we got this setup, Olympus Keyblade with its transformation Counter Shield to get Sora to activate Guard form. We'll label this as a defensive type keyblade. We also have that Star Seeker looking keyblade which clearly looks like a magic type keyblade and it has Sora go into this blue magic form for the keyblade transformation double arrow guns. What if Sora were to unequip this keyblade and put on a new keyblade that also happened to still be a magic type keyblade? Maybe it would still cause him to go into this blue magic form again, but the only thing that changes is that instead of double arrow guns, we'll get whatever the new Keyblade's transformation is. Basically, instead of Nomura having to design an entirely new Sora form for each and every individual Keyblade, which might be like over 20 Keyblades in the game, with a new color scheme and all, we have Keyblade types, and they're organized into categories like power, guard, and magic, and maybe a couple other categories that have Sora's clothes changed to a general form with a distinct design, but only the Keyblade transformation changes while the forms are recurring based on Keyblade type. I think it makes sense. Why else would these forms have such general names such as guard and power? So at the end, we have a handful of forms similar to Kingdom Hearts 2 that are compatible with multiple of the Keyblades that Sora unlocks, and the form is determined by the combat style of the Keyblade transformation. I don't believe this idea applies to second form for Kingdom Key though, that one may be an exception to this rule only for Kingdom Key. 
I think that the idea makes sense and this idea is what they're going for instead of an entirely new form every single time for every single Keyblade. But that's kind of just a theory and it hasn't been confirmed yet. My opinions are subject to change as we see more of the game. In the final stretch of this trailer, we can see our five-man party now in Galaxy Toys. It's supposed to be a toy store, but all the shelves and such are basically the height of the Gigas toys? That's a little strange. Speaking of Gigas from the Galaxy Toys ad earlier in the trailer, we can see them standing here with the Heartless. There's a red one, purple one, and a blue one. Taking a look around Galaxy Toys, we can see the same Julia dolls and cars that were being advertised on the flyer in addition to the Gigas. After a cut, we can see that Sora activated a situation command to be able to take over the Gigas mech, which switches you to first person view. Now, looking at the commands, all the Gigas have the same basic attacks. Blaster, Punch, Booster, Danger Dash, and Eject. On the lower right, we can see what looks to be a heat meter. It probably represents what is the Giga's health bar. And on the left, we have this yellow bar, which is kind of like the fuel tank. Using Danger Dash, which is this, and the booster, which is multiple jumps like this, depletes the gauge. Sora is very freely able to eject from these Gigas, whether it's high up in the air or on the ground. Each of the three colored Gigas have their own special ability, which looks like it would be activated with the triangle button. Red has Tackle, Blue has Exploder, and Purple has Cannon. We do get to see the blue one use Exploder here, and the purple one uses Cannon here, but we do not ever get to see the red one's special attack. After a Gigas uses the special attack, it has to recharge, much like a command deck command. As this Gigas gameplay is shown, it breaks apart the shelves in the environment. This looks to be like true environmental damage. Just as Sora is able to go inside of these mechs and take control over them, I assume Heartless or something are able to control the enemy Gigas in the area. It would make sense to me as I don't think these Gigas would be evil on their own. It's also worth noting that this whole Gigas gimmick appears to be optional and we can see Sora fight the Gigas and use fire spells on it like normal and still be able to do damage. In fact, Sora's fire spells in this clip appear to stun the purple Gigas leaving it in a down state. I'm very happy that it looks to be optional and they aren't forcing gimmicks like this into your combat and instead letting you the player decide. God, I'm so sick of saying Gigas. Lastly, we have a nice scene between young Xehanort and Sora. <laughs> okay, I don't know why Sora sarcastically saying, yeah, great kills me. Like, he's just so uninterested in young Xehanort's blabber. Anyways, you can see that there's something holding Sora back here. It's not young Xehanort himself, and it's not a Giga's mech. This texture looks completely foreign to me, so I have no idea what it is Sora is pushing up against with this Keyblade. <laughs> Young Xehanort says they are missing one of the 13 darknesses and they're looking to reclaim it, and that something in this Toy Story world could provide a clue. The friends of Buzz and Woody that went missing are probably the hearts connecting that young Xehanort is observing for clues. I'm not quite sure what it is about those guys' hearts in particular, but Xehanort's earlier speech about shadows filling emptiness, fitting together like Heartless and Nobodies, does give me an idea. I think he's trying to hint at them maybe searching for a way to get Vanitas to be a darkness. But Vanitas can maybe only awaken when the piece fits again, so Ventus being awakened? This could be why they went after Sora and Dream Drop Distance in the first place. For Vanitas, it's kind of even alluded to in that game with an illusion from Sora's heart he sees when he meets young Xehanort. What do you think young Xehanort is referring to in this cutscene? That was my best guess. Oh, also young Xehanort's model, it looks... 
Eh. He doesn't appear to be a toy as far as I can tell, but that makes sense as I have never seen organization members conform to the look of any world in the past. His model is not the greatest, but I think it's definitely getting there. They did say that these models we've been seeing in these trailers are not yet final and they're still making adjustments. So I feel like by the end of it, he'll end up looking fine. And this is just a little sneak peek. And that's a wrap. We just looked at everything from the latest Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer. And the game will be coming out next year. Woo! My overall thoughts on the trailer, really good. This is the most like a complete game Kingdom Hearts 3 has ever looked. We got story scenes, Sora talking, and no shortage of gameplay. This trailer has it all, and although I used to avoid this trailer before, after sitting down and analyzing it, I like it way more than I used to, and now it's my favorite one. Of course, the gameplay shown still could use some adjustments, but there's plenty of good things and improvements that I've seen as well. I hope you guys found the video to be worth the watch as I worked really hard on it, so any support and sharing is appreciated. <sighs> I'm really glad I got to get inspired and get this out again when I did. If another trailer had come out before I analyzed this one, who knows if I ever would have done it. And having a trailer analysis missing from my channel just feels wrong. Now we're all caught up again. I look forward to the next trailer, which Nomura says will try to showcase more battle mechanics. Oh, that's exciting. Anyways, that trailer will be getting analyzed by me as well, whenever it hits. So I'll see you guys for another analysis next month, maybe, for Jump Festa? If not that, then definitely next February for D23 Japan. Anyways, that's all for today. I've been Sir Harlem One. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys later.